So, about 10 years ago at Juilliard, I remember falling asleep at virtually every concert I attended, and Liz can certainly attest to my lion-sized yawns. Uh, something about it, this, this music that I love, uh, the classical music that I love playing and listening to is making me fall asleep. And I, looking around at, uh, at the audience and at the performers, it's, it's as if people were practically bowing their heads in reverential prayer, worshiping these musical works deemed to be great. And while I can respect that attitude, I think it misses the point. This music was composed to, it was composed to change our lives. It was composed to offer simple joys or compassion when we're sad, to give us a reason to live, to touch our hearts. And so I, I asked myself, as classical musicians, do we uh, dissect Mozart's music uh, in a scientific study uh, and merely comment on its perfection? Or do we approach it as the mirthful and reckless Mozart uh, would while playing with friends? Uh, it basically, it, it forced me to create some sort of mission like a mission statement that would help reorient my priorities as I was presenting this, these great works, these awesome works to the public. Uh, so that mission, that mission is to make classical music a relevant and powerful force in society. My musical epiphanies and inspirations date back way before college, back to childhood. I actually grew up here in Chicago and I, I just have to say that I'm so proud today listening to all these awesome people talk to be from Chicago. Um, and anyway, growing up, I was super lucky to be exposed to the excellence of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and the Ravinia Festival. But strangely enough, my exposure to rock music might have been the thing that really fueled my creative fire. Um, I remember when I was 13 years old, I like discovered um, alternative rock music on Q101. And I was like, oh my god, yeah, I, I know, I wish it still existed. But I remember hearing 1979 by the Smashing Pumpkins, and it was, this, it was like this odd awakening of sorts. Um, but perhaps the greatest influence on me um, was the Beatles, of course. And it was, you know, I grew up listening to their albums, watching their movies, and in the car on the way to my lessons, I would sing along to John, Paul, George, and Ringo, and I knew all their songs by heart, but I think what galvanized me was a few things. Their fearless risk-taking, their all-encompassing creativity, and their utter devotion to their craft. And above all, their music spoke to me, and I, I, I still think of their music as this fascinating mishmash of all these influences from Bob Dylan to Motown to Ravi Shankar and even Baroque music. And, and they somehow made it their own and turned their music into something completely original, illuminating, and timeless. And so all of these influences basically uh, affected me and shaped me as an artist. And it really made me extra passionate about our mission, this idea that classical music can be just as powerful and exciting. We put our mission into action in everything we do, from the music we play to the way that we present it. Uh, we personalize our performances by playing music that we have composed or arranged ourselves. We appropriate music of our time. We explore the sonic possibilities of our instrument. All of these, in fact, you'll be able to hear in a work we're about to perform for you right now. So as you listen to this piece, I want you to imagine a Picasso painting with a face. So you got like the eye here and the nose up here and the mouth like all the way over there. And basically with this cover that we've done of this iconic pop hit, we've reworked the melody so that it's kind of distorted and transfigured. But ultimately we wanted to highlight the sinister spirit and the rhythmic propulsion of the original. Michael Jackson's Billie Jean.
Thank you. Thank you. So besides performances, we're also known for our self-produced music videos, which we've created to excite audiences and to attract new ones to classical music. And um, with these you know, videos, we've, we had the most humble beginnings. We just started off with my mom's basic camcorder, found a couple pianos, and our own wild imaginations. And then it's turned into something big. And these videos have garnered millions of views around the world. So in making these videos, we use the visual component to our advantage, to enhance our mission, to, to make the music more relevant and more powerful to our listeners. That's right. So for example, we use visuals to underscore the mood of the music. In this piece by Vivaldi, we've created a complementary atmosphere of melancholy bleakness through our choice of cinematography. So in this next example, we use visual effects to intensify the sense of dialogue already inherent in the music. Watch the reflections. So later on in the video, we use like 24 vid uh, style <laughs> video editing technique to further illustrate this musical dialogue. use these videos to highlight the dramatic physicality of our piano duo choreography. Four hands on a keyboard are very similar to four feet on a dance floor, as you will see in this excerpt of a famed Strauss waltz. We also use our music videos to bring the narrative to life. The final excerpt is from our arrangement of Schubert's Der Erlkönig, a song about pursuit and death. In our version, watches we, the pianists, are similarly consumed by the music, by obsession, and by forces of our imagination. that it's not enough to just play a piece of music well. What matters to us is that the music lives, breathes, sings, and it, that it, it has an impact on all of our lives and gives meaning to our existence. So for this concluding piece, we've taken a tango by Astor Piazzolla and we've delved into its universe, its sounds, moves, and soul. To bring the tango to thrilling musical life, We've evoked the noises of an Argentinian tango band. We emulate the dancer's intricate footsteps in our hands as we navigate the keyboard. And finally, we've brought the spirit of the tango to the fore, that charged chemistry, that physical friction, that element of danger, uh, both sexual and athletic. So here's Pietola's Lieber tango. Let's turn up the heat.